So this has been pretty interesting, guys. There's been a lot going on. AV, mm. kind of fill us in on some of the happenings yesterday. The yes. little gaming channel was like, man, it was going down yesterday. Yesterday Carl, was crazy. So for those that missed it, um, yesterday started with a detective. His name was Detective Dennis. And I, I know you guys remember him because when he was in an interrogation room with little Woody, and he's trying to get information out of Woody. He said, listen, this ain't no 68. <laughs> you got to give us something. All right. You want to get out of jail? You got to give us something. Right. So that detective was on the stand. I believe he said it a little bit cruder. I believe he was like, <laughs> you know, I ain't just going to keep sucking your without you sucking mine. <laughs> oh and we in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> this is how these Atlanta attorney, these Atlanta uh, uh, investigators. This is how they investigate. Right, right. Like, I'm, I'm tired of sucking your. Dick. <laughs> you better start sucking mine. Oh my god! <laughs> you been saying this ain't no '68, okay? He was yeah. wilding out. Boy. Atlanta's for real. Come down here and see what happened. It All was. right, so then, so that's that's Dennis, right? That's the yep. one who was the 68 guy, yes. okay? Yes, so we started the day with him on the stand. It was a little bit of a mess. He was up there very cocky. He um he retired, and he's like, you know, I'm qualified as a gang expert. This is his third time testifying, so again, uh -huh. it's redundant. Um, He was qualified as a gang expert, but it went off the rails because he tried to get qualified as an expert in rap lyrics. Mm. And he said he should be qualified as an expert in rap lyrics because he teaches classes on it. He's watched boys in the hood. He's read <laughs> magazines and he should be qualified as an expert because of his personal experience. Hell and Lee, no. you know how crazy that is, because there's a specific way to um, qualify one as an expert. You need to have background experience and training in yes. those things. So anyway, so it started to go off the rails. And then there was a point where we saw a picture of Yak Gotti. Um, he was in front of Lennox Mall standing on a car. Mm. Now, the detective said something. Um, he said that Yak Gotti was in and out of jail. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a reason why that statement was inappropriate, because it is talking about character evidence. So Doug Weinstein immediately stood up and motioned for a mistrial. So that motion, um, you know, they, they broke out. And, you know, the jury left and the detective left and the judge ended up not um, granting the motion for a mistrial. But what she did instead is she said he's done. Mm. He can't he can't come back because he should have known better to make a statement like that. Wow. So they lost almost two hours of testimony. Simone didn't know what to do. Miss Love wasn't there. <laughs> And she was scrambling and scraping, trying to keep him on the stand. And then the judge was like, nope, you can't have him. He can't he can't be here. Wow. So, um, you know, they, they were pretty upset. They didn't know what to do. They didn't have anybody lined up for the rest of the day. So instead, um, after that big blow it was a huge win for the defense because they haven't had, um, you know, all those things happen. And it's so funny because Brian's so polite. Brian goes, you know, judge. Can we also just have his whole testimony stricken from the record today? And she said yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then Take Brian's the like testimony. Brian's like, the exhibits too. She said <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we were all like, oh my God. We were watching it like it was wow. a Super Bowl. Then uh, towards the end of the day, a second um police officer came up, and this was crazy. He had gotten shot six times by another unindicted co-conspirator, right? Six times. So we watched- It wasn't indicted? Why did they uh, indict wait, the dude? Wait, wait, hang on. I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, I think he is related to count one, but this shooting was not, like they're trying to say that the shooting was done in an effort to show Rico. Like, because he's YSL, he's a part of all of this. Uh -huh. But the shooting was actually like a separate thing. Wow. He did it on his own. He was mm. at one of the gas stations. I don't know if he was peddling drugs or whatever the case may be. The police officers followed him. He had a, a warrant out for his arrest. They tried to stop him. They were like, get on the ground, boy. And he was like, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. And then he just whipped out and just shot the cop six times. Six times. So we Jesus. saw that body cam footage. And then after that, um, after we saw all of that, we also saw the arrest footage. And they were like, you know, like they just kicked in the door. They were trying to get him. It was crazy. Yesterday was wild. Wow. And wow. 
And here's the best part. After we were done at 9 p.m. last night and I sent it to lead the state, they were really upset that they lost Detective Dennis on the stand. Mm. So they went to the Court of Appeals to see if they can reverse Judge Whitaker's decision. Wow. Did they get a certificate of certification? I don't know. I just I saw the motion for reconsideration. I sent that to you, too. It's wow. about six pages. OK, you sent me one thing, but this one, it looks like it's in filed in the in the, uh, Superior Court. Superior so, Court, yeah. Let's take a look at it, guys. Let's see it right here. Thank you, A.V., for sending it over. Bam. There it is. Bam. And this is in response, I suppose, to the striking of uh, that guy's testimony. Is that right? Yes, sir. Um, all right. So what do we got here? State of Georgia, Jeffrey Williams, a.k.a. Young Thug, a.k.a. King Slime. <laughs> Judge Whitaker. State's motion to reconsider oral order striking witnesses' testimony and related exhibits. So this is just like what A.V. was saying, the striking of the testimony and the striking of exhibits. All right, uh, A.V., do you want to start us off right here? Absolutely. So it says, comes now the state of Georgia and respectfully moves this honorable court to reconsider its October 17th oral order striking the October 17th testimony of witness retired investigator Dennis and related exhibits and precluded his future testimony as a sanction for an inadvertent non-responsive answer during his testimony. In support thereof, the state shows the following. So we're going to start with some background. During an investigator Dennis's testimony, investigator Dennis referred to actions Defendant Diamante Kendrick performed immediately after his release from custody. Defendant Kendrick moved for a mistrial, which this court appropriately denied. As a sanction for this event, however, the court struck the entirety of Investigator Dennis's October 17th testimony, precluded him from testifying in the future, and struck uh, from evidence exhibits which investigator Dennis had authenticated on October 17th. Oh no. So that's why they're so mad about the exhibits because mm -hmm. if you strike the exhibits, the photos and everything they had <laughs> yeah. used this, they had used the investigator to introduce those into evidence. Mm -hmm. So if you strike the investigator, then you also strike the photos and all the proofs. Oh my God. Yeah. So this is pretty bad. Yeah. Um, the scope of the state's claim. It is appropriate for the court to strike a witness's answer from the jury's consideration when it contains information the court finds the jury should not have heard or should and should not consider. The state does not contest that part of the court's ruling. The state submits, however, that the court's order striking the entirety of the witness's October 17th testimony precluding the witness from testifying in the future and excluding exhibits which had been admitted through this witness on October 17th was improper as an exclusion of evidence which the law does not permit. The state thus respectfully moves the court to reverse those portions of the court's oral order. So here's the analysis part. All right, and let's just jump in. Like, why, why is it so important for Steele to strike uh, this um, this investigator's testimony, you know, what kind of belies it? Here's the thing, guys. If if someone you have a, a right to confront witnesses who are testifying against you, yeah, that's a constitutional right. So if uh, this this investigator sits up there and testifies for one hour, two hour, three hours with uh, with attorney Hilton, then Steele's waiting. Steele's like, OK, you get to go. But then I represent Young Thug. Um, Weinstein is like, OK, I represent someone. Everybody represents someone. We get our turn. We get our bite at the apple. But if the judge says, hey, this guy said something, this investigator said something he shouldn't have said, so you can't put him back up. Well, if he's not put back up, when do I get my bite at the apple? He said that. This he's ain't no 68. When, <laughs> when do I get my up? That's what Steele is saying. It's like, it's, you you cut him off, but I never got a chance to cross, to, him. To cross him, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's why this is such a big deal, because it is a constitutional right. 
And so this judge is like, oh, okay, you do have a right to cross-examine him. I did order that he cannot come back up. So you have to strike everything now, everything that he said over these hours, because still uh, Weinstein, uh, all these attorneys don't get to confront him. Do y'all see what the issue is? It's, there's an issue of confrontation here as, as, a, as a, in addition to putting this guy's bad character into evidence. And that's exactly right. And this is why Lee is brilliant, because he didn't even see it yesterday and just put that together. And that's exactly what the issue is. OK, let's get to the analysis now. Avi, do you want to start off right here? Yeah. Um, evidence exclusion is an extreme sanction and one not favored in the law. State v. Smith, that is a 2011 case. Uh, this is str so strongly part of Georgia law that even the most well-established privileges are narrowly construed as the ascertainment of as many facts as possible leads to the truth, the discovery of which is the object of a legal, uh, le all legal investigation. That's Burns v. State. Yep, that's a 2024 case. So now they have a statute, Rule 402. It provides that in relevant part that all relevant evidence shall be admissible except as limited by constitutional requirements or as otherwise provided by law or by other rules as prescribed pursuant to constitutional or statutory, statutory authority applicable in the court in which the matter is pending. That is, the emphasis added, <laughs> that is rule 402 forbids a court from excluding evidence unless constitutional or statutory authority authorizes that exclusion. Here, no constitutional or statutory authority authorizes the exclusion of the non-offending portions of Investigator Dennis's testimony, of his future testimony or the related exhibits. Mm. We are uh, where a purported ground for evidentiary exclusion does not come within the exceptions enumerated in 402, it finds no home in any of the specific or detailed exclusionary rules included in the new code and is sustainable. So they cite another case. Yeah, you don't have to read all that. Damn, that's a big, uh, that's a big uh, paragraph. Yeah. Yeah. So forget that. Um, I'll pick it up right here. Okay. This is consistent with federal interpretations of the corresponding federal rule of evidence 402, which has a prospective effect in that it precludes trial judges from future creation of new exclusionary rules of general applicability. While OCGA 24-6-611 permits a court with control over the mode and order of witness examination, Rule 611 does not authorize an order excluding evidence and would uh, not justify the order here at issue. All right. So we're just going to skip down because some of this is BS. Um, what they're basically saying. Well, shit, here's a conclusion right here. <laughs> here's a conclusion right here. He said, for these reasons, the state respectfully moves this court to reverse those portions of the court's oral order in which it struck the entirety of Investigator Dennis's October 17th, uh, 2024 testimony. So what, let me go back and see, what are they talking about? This, I hate the way they write. Let me see here. Yeah, this really doesn't, it doesn't address the issues. What they're saying is, hey, judge, you can't be making up rules. You know, we have this rule here, rule 611. We have all these other rules and you just can't invent your own rules. You have to go by rules to exclude evidence because excluding evidence is such a harsh sanction. And she's right. Judges should not be excluding evidence um, unless there's a real need for it. But what she's not putting in this is the need. She doesn't mention anywhere in here what this guy said about, I don't know what, it, what he said, but she doesn't mention in here, hey, uh, my witness who I was supposed to prepare uh, mm -hmm. said this thing that was completely out of bounds and said it in front of the jury. She doesn't mention, hey, that thing that the, my witness said uh, in front of the jury, it cannot be taken back. The jury will remember it. She doesn't mention anything about that. She doesn't mention, hey, you know, my witness um, 
you know, if he's an investigator, he's been to court before he's testified before, you know, why doesn't he know not to say this stuff? So this is not a very good motion in that it doesn't it doesn't talk about all the facts. You know, attorneys, we have a duty of candor. And so you have to say facts that are for you. You know, you're going to argue, argue for your side, but you also have to say the facts that are against you. And she's not she's not talking about what happened here. She's just saying, hey, don't exclude don't exclude my um, don't yeah. exclude my my witnesses uh, testimony. Mm -hmm. And Simone was like, you know, she was just like it was an inadvertent mistake. But Doug was just like the jury cannot unhear that. You can't take it back. That's they true. heard it. So then they spent a long time coming up with jury instructions together. And the judge was just shutting her down. She's like, nope, you're not getting that. We're not saying that. Like, We're just going to say that they are going to disregard everything he said today. That's it. Really? Jesus. Let me. Um, You sent me the uh, the motion here. Let's take a quick look to see what happened, guys. What 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 are we talking about here? Uh, where Simone apparently was scrambling and scraping, <laughs> trying to hold her whole case together. So this is what happened yesterday, guys. And apparently it was a shit show. Pull things from social media. Is that fair to say? Yes. All right. And even after 2015, did you still... This is the very beginning. ...were able to view social media of individuals that were a part of that 2015 investigation? Yes. You have permission to approach? You may. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 1TT and 544Y. Can you please tell me if you recognize what's in first State's Exhibit 1TT? Yes. And did you pull that from social media? Yes. And is that a fair and accurate depiction of the picture in which you pulled from social media that contains um, a blue car and an individual standing on a blue car? Yes. Yeah, and this time, same like the tenor states, it's in one TT into evidence. Oh, yeah. One yeah. TT into evidence. All right, that's admitted. And then also looking at Stacey's in 544Y, is that a picture um, that you pulled from the Instagram of, whose Instagram is that? Let me ask. Uh, it appears to be Shannon Stillwell. And what was the Instagram handle? OG underscore bull, B O O. You know, shout out to y'all. I was thinking the exact same thing and we'll pick it up right here at 121. But watch when she comes up to the damn podium. She's kicking her. She's kicking her legs like a horse. Did y'all see that shit? <laughs> Look at this. Why is she <laughs> kicking her legs like a horse? <laughs> oh, my God. I don't understand. <laughs> Simone the Stallion. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, she got a new name. Simone the Stallion. <laughs> She's kicking her feet. <laughs> I didn't understand it. And y'all were right, so y'all picked that shit up too, and man. <laughs> Jesus. Is that a picture um, that you pulled from the Instagram of whose Instagram is that? Uh, it appears to be Shannon Steelwell. And what was the Instagram handle? OG underscore bull, B O O L. And Excuse me, I'm sorry. Could you use the microphone, please? Shit. Thank you. And is there a date on that image? March 28th of 2015. Um, you're on this time to stay by the tender stations about 544Y into evidence. It's admitted. She's still us. kicking. Yeah, I do have a sorry. specific <laughs> Look at her. I can approach now or I can approach before it's published. Look at her. Yes, go ahead and approach now. I'm going to also show you what's been marked as Stacey's in the 545Y. Do you recognize Stacey's in the 545? Yes. Um, it was a Stacey's in the 545Y. It's a post from Mr. Steelwheel's Instagram. And was that also pulled in, appeared to be having it posted in 2015? This girl. Yes. Same date as the other picture. Yeah, this time it's the Stacey's in the 545Y. It's a... It's renewing my objection from when we litigated these before. Okay. Um, it is admitted. Those have to be four inches. Were made Those are too tall. Preserved and as to 544 oh, why that's admitted. Like, for court? Like that's subject to a lot. modification the two of you agree to. Sure. Thank you. All right. First show on Stacey Limit 543 why? Excuse me, 544Y. She's still bucking. <laughs> like what? <laughs> <She's> bucking. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with the audio? Let's oh, go, they guys. They did that a lot yesterday. Every time they showed an exhibit, they muted what was being said. All right. So we just showing random photos. But again, guys, 
the prosecution wants to introduce these photos. The prosecution wants to show these photos to the jury. The judge has now struck all of these photos. So the jury cannot consider them. These photos do not go back to the jury. They're going to forget about them if we're honest. A little awkward silence. Right. Feet still kicking. <laughs> still sucking. <laughs> <laughs> Hilton, the stallion. Girl, I love now look that. at that sexy one TT. I'd be like, dude, you better get off my car. Yeah, that's. I think it's wife and Lucci's car. How does that not dent the the trunk? What do y'all think that dude weighs? At least one fifty, right? Mm. I didn't even realize that, but on second glance, I guess wife and Lucci was in the car, and Yacht Gotti was outside at the mall, and it was standing on his car. Are you serious? <laughs> that that is disrespectful. <laughs> that is disrespectful. That's like when you come home and them niggas sitting on your porch. You're like, oh, here we go, here we go. You grew up in the hood. You know what I'm talking about. That is probably Glanville's dog. I heard a dog right there. Here he comes. Your Honor, this one you cannot fix. Mm. This is bad character evidence that came in. The state should have prepared their witness. I move for a mistrial. This absolutely cannot be unheard by the jury. It was here heard clear as day in his deep sonorous voice. They have heard it, they have absorbed it. It cannot be fixed. 404A, Your Honor. Well, here, whatever response the state might be able to make on that. Um, in your mind, that was not the state's intention. We'd- I'm sure it wasn't. <laughs> um, Your Honor, it, that wasn't even, that response didn't even come across my mind that would be, that would even have come out of our witness's mouth, Your Honor. Um, the state's intention was to solely talk about the vehicle that he was standing on and the fact that he was standing on that vehicle. If you can just- I'll be honest, I fucking missed it. What was said? I missed the whole damn thing. Did y'all hear it? No, because it was during the portion when they were showing the picture and it was muted. So we couldn't hear it. Oh. But we heard it in the courtroom. Oh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. I thought I missed Give us an opportunity something. just to look at some case law just to see if we your, can. Your Honor, I'm sorry. How many times has this man testified in a trial? How long has he been in an, I know he's a retired investigator. How long has he been an investigator? He knows he is not supposed to say that, Your Honor. Mm. I, I would find it surprising if he isn't aware that that's not supposed to come out. Um, I do not believe that the state intended to elicit that. And I think that you actually yourself acknowledged up here at the bench that you don't believe that was the state's intention. I, I do not believe none it happened. Yeah. I'm going to give y'all uh, about uh, 15 minutes or so Thank to you. find whatever you might be able to find. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Now, the statement, the statement, according to Thugger Daily, was mm -hmm. the detective said he was in and out of jail and just got out of jail. Mm. That was the statement. So we couldn't hear it at home, but it was said during that muted part. And again, um, Team Thuggerdale is like three people. So they had uh, sources in the courtroom to tell. I was on their uh, Twitter X thing uh, thing yesterday. One of them's a white boy. Yeah. I was like, you're white? <laughs> <laughs> I always thought it was a black dude. Nope. Oh, all right. So let's see. So this is this is when they come back. The judge gave them 15 minutes, apparently. When I say them, the judge gave the state 15 minutes to find case law to say, hey, man, you know, why, sh why shouldn't this be excluded? Why shouldn't this be a mistrial? Let's go there. Doug asked for a mistrial. Why shouldn't this be a mistrial? You had 15 minutes to come back to tell us uh, what you found in the case law, in the jurisprudence to show and demonstrate and prove that this should not be a mistrial. Let's see what uh, Simone has to say. Yes, Your Honor, the state will ask that you deny defendant's um, motion for a mistrial. The state would like to cite the court to Swims v. State, which is 307 Georgia, 651, a 2020 case, Your Honor. In that case, which was the defendant's only enumeration of error, and I'm in Division Two. 
of that um, opinion, Your Honor. Swims contends that the trial court erred in denying his motion for mistrial after his character was improperly placed into evidence during Chelsea Owens testimony. When the state asked Owens if Swims offered any reason for why he wanted to escape, Owens responded, and this is what the witness said in that case, I asked Swims, why would he do that? I said, why would you want to do that? He told me because they did not honor his fast and speedy trial. He was looking at getting off on the technicality because they didn't honor that. He didn't have that for his defense. He said he was doing time. He had a lot of time in West Virginia that he wasn't ever going to get out. In that case, Swim's trial counsel immediately asked to approach the bench and moved for a mistrial. The trial court judge overruled Swim's objection and denied his motion. The state resumed his direct examination of Owens, who then testified that Swims provided another possible motivation for attempting an escape, that Swims had murdered Clemson. I asked him, did y'all kill that child? And he told me, why do you want out of here so bad? So that was how the testimony continued. I'm going to skip down a trial court's denial of a motion for mistrial based on it based on the improper admission of bad character evidence is reviewed for abuse of discretion by examining factors and circumstances, including the nature of the statement. Skelton, slow down, waiting, please. Sorry. The other evidence in the case and the action taken by the court and counsel concerning the impropriety. And they cite Smith v. State 302 Georgia 699. A passing reference to a defendant's incarceration does not place his character in evidence. And they cite Lewis v. State 287 to 287 Georgia 210 at Penn site 212. Furthermore, Owens passing reference to Swim's incarceration in West Virginia for an unstated crime was an unexpected answer to the question asked by the prosecutor who was attempting to establish that Clemson's murder was the reason Swim's wanted out of jail so bad. And they see Walker v. State 282 Georgia 703. A non-responsive answer that impacts negatively on a defendant's character does not improperly place his character in issue. After Swim's mistrial was denied, the state did not inquire further into Swim's crimes in West Virginia beyond a single confirmation that his incarceration there also served as a motive for escape. Your Honor, given um, what occurred in this case, Your Honor, the state's intention when I asked the question, what was the significance of that picture of the state's intended intention was solely to talk about the fact that Mr. Kendrick was standing on that car, that car being that of Rayshon Bennett. His mother had identified that car yesterday during her testimony, Your Honor. Um, so it was an inadvertent response, which was not responsive to the state's answer, Your Honor. And given that is what occurred, um, Your Honor, the state would ask that you deny um, his, deny their motion. Furthermore, Your Honor, other things, other factors that you look at in order to determine whether or not um, a mistrial should be granted is the nature of the statement, other evidence in the case, the actions taken by the store, excuse me, the actions taken by the court. The what? The actions taken by the courts was the reference and isolated and brief and whether the jury exposure was, ex was repeated and extensive and was it inadvertent. Um, additionally, Your Honor, in within the indictments, Your Honor, we did charge Mr. Kendrick with as one of the over acts in this indictment, which is Act 58. And he's also charged in this indictment in count 63 of this indictment, Your Honor, a possession of a firearm by a convicted felon previously convicted of a felony involving the use or possession of a firearm. Your Honor, so for the purposes of having to prove that count of the indictment, we will have to enter into or enter Mr. Kendrick's certified copy of his conviction, of course, with a limiting instruction that that only be used against him, Your Honor. So so the fact that that came out during um, during that testimony would not be substantially um, more prejudicial, Your Honor, given that one, the jury has heard this indictment um, and as well as this um, evidence will come out, at least that he was convicted um, because we have to prove that a portion of the indictment, Your Honor. So we would ask that the court deny his motion, deny his motion. All right. I mean, that is a good point, though. It, it seems like the issue is um, the witness put the guy's character into evidence saying that he was in and out of jail and this and that, and the jury shouldn't have known that. But what's the problem? The problem is in the indictment, they have him listed as a convicted felon anyways. Right. <laughs> so it was like, you know, why are you crying about this witness saying that your boy's in and out of jail 
when in the indictment, we've already got him possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, right? But, you know, I, I, that, that, that's a good saving point by, the, by Hilton. Hilton came up with that. I like that. That was a good argument. Let's go. And we have instructed our witness. Okay, I said this. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Here comes Weinstein. In the Swims case cited by the state, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do not believe that was a seasoned officer that testified about the bad character. Is that correct? I don't know. If it's yeah, no, I looked. It's not. It's, it's it an a inmate, inmate, right? And I think there's a distinction between a fellow inmate and an officer with decades of experience. Um, and it's not just I that think that. I mean, I think if you go back and look at Posey v. State, which you may have already looked at, 152, Georgia Appeals 216, um, there you have a case where a seasoned officer testified about bad character of a defendant. Um, the court in that case called for there should have been a mistrial. It says that when it's impossible for the trial court by corrective instruction to rectify the harm done by improper testimony, a mistrial must be granted. Um, and again, the issue here is you have a seasoned officer, someone with years of experience testifying. And in Posey, uh, there's really very instructive language from our courts um, where they say, we, we reiterate here. I'm sorry, I'm talking too fast. And too loudly. <laughs> We, yeah, you know what? I'm going to tone it down. We reiterate here what we said in Boyd. It may well be argued that Jeez. peace officers are not always well acquainted with our rules of evidence and that statements such as the one here are merely inadvertent. I'm going to stop the quote for a second to say something, which is, again, here we have a peace officer. Here we have an investigator who is well seasoned. The quote continues. But if we refuse to reverse this judgment, then we provide no incentive to district attorneys and solicitors to counsel their witnesses, especially law enforcement officers, to avoid extraneous and inadmissible outbursts. It is high time that this court go on record as opposing without reservation such conduct by law enforcement officers. Posey is exactly on point. Posey calls for a mistrial. This officer should have known better. The state should have properly prepared the witness to not issue, to not blurt out, to not state so clearly that my client was just getting out of prison. It cannot be corrected, Your Honor. All right. Um, any last words by the state? Well, actually, never mind. It's the defense's motion, so y'all don't get any last words. Um, all right. I, I think I am finding that this was not intentionally elicited on the part of the state. Um, however, I also am finding that this witness as a law enforcement officer should have known better than to make any mention of it. Um, it is, however, significant that one of the charges against Mr. Kendrick in this indictment is that he is a convicted felon. Um, were it not for that, I would grant the mistrial motion. Wow. Um, but yeah. given that this jury already knows that he's yeah. been convicted and is a convicted felon um, anyway, even without this testimony, um, I don't think that a mistrial is warranted. I am, however, going to give a curative instruction and um, as a sanction for this having occurred, um, that's the end of the testimony from this witness. There's going to be no more testimony from him. So he's done. All right. Um, what I am proposing to say. Uh, See, and that's the problem right there, <clears throat> because she says, Whitaker says, well, this witness is done. What's the problem? Uh, the defense counsel never got to cross-examine. So now their right to confront their witnesses has been abridged. And constitutionally, that cannot happen. So what the judge did, the judge was like, hey, he can't testify anymore. The judge really didn't think about the fact that Shart and Weinstein and Steele, they haven't had their bite at the apple yet. Yep. Let's go. As an instruction is defendant Kendrick's prior criminal history has no relevance to this case except as to count 63 and should not have been mentioned. 
Further, this witness, as a former law enforcement officer, should have known better than to make any mention of it. Likewise, Mr. Kendrick's criminal history should not be considered in connection with any of these other defendants or any of the charges against them in this case. Your Honor? Yes, sir. Um, I would also then, because we didn't have the opportunity to cross-examine, so it would be right. a confrontation clause. It would be reversible error. So I'm moving. Hey, let me ask you this. Have y'all cross-examined him the yes. two times before? Yes. All right. So we're going to strike everything yes. today. And right. the notes, just like you did before, all the notes, I have to go back, give them to the court if you don't yeah. mind, yeah. put them under wow. seal. Or that's what I remember you doing, but whatever you did with them. And um, if they can't follow that instruction, please alert your right. court if yeah. you don't mind. You're right. Can we just ask that we could just stop our testimony and give them an opportunity to cross-examine him? No. I you're, guess you can ask, and the I mean, answer is no. <laughs> wow. But you're, I don't. The answer is. And let me stop it right. Record. Yes, Your Honor. Let me stop it right there. This is this is a good try. This is a good try from from uh, Hilton. What is she saying? Because and shout out to Michael Love. Michael Love says. Will that striking also include some of the interrogation tapes? And I was like, man, this guy has testified a few times in this case. So is the judge going to strike everything that he said, not only uh, yesterday, but all the times in the past? And the judge said, well, let's consider this. In the past, when he's testified, did you guys get the opportunity to cross-examine? And Steele says, yes. And so the judge says, OK, well, if you got the opportunity to cross examine then, then we're only talking about today. So to answer Michael Love's question, whatever happened yesterday, if they were if there were the introduction of photos, those get struck. If there was the introduction of interrogation tapes, then those get struck. Now, that doesn't mean that the tapes can never come in. It just means that the tapes can never come in through this witness. If they have another witness, that they can get the tapes in through, then they they can call that witness and get the tapes in. They can call that witness and get the photos in. Um, but what Hilton is saying right here, Hilton is like, wait a minute. The whole problem is that the defense counsel didn't get to cross-examine. So judge, this is what we should do. If you're saying that I can't have him, I can't ask him any more questions, my direct examination has ended, fine, fine. Bring his black ass back up. And now give Shark, give Doug, give Brian, give them the opportunity to cross-examine. Because if you give them the opportunity to cross-examine now, everything that he said in the past comes in. And we're just limiting it going forward. White woman Whitaker like, no, nah, fuck that. He ain't never coming back up. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't never coming back up. As a sanction, as for what he did, he will never come back up in this courtroom. And if he does not get to come back up in the courtroom, what do we say? Shark, Weinstein, Brian, they don't get their bite at the apple. They don't get the chance to cross-examine him. So I like what um, I like what Hilton did right here, just saying, hey, bring him back up and let's get the cross-examine. I won't say anything, but cross-examine him and then let's continue on. Hilton was like, mm-mm. Yeah, they wouldn't even let him come back for the jury instruction part or to be dismissed from the case. Wow. She didn't want him to come back in at all. So that's a harsh sanction right there. I know I know Hilton mad as hell about that. She's gonna cry in the car. I know she did not, you know, and I have I have been there, guys. People now, okay, let me just make a distinction. You guys nut up on the stand. Y'all have never testified before in your life. You get up there, the judge is watching, the jury's watching, everybody's watching. And even though, you know, we we prepared you, I've had one of my law partners grill you as a prosecutor or grill you as opposing counsel. You know what the deal is. When you get up there under the lights, you start saying some bullshit like, where did this come? Why are you saying this? Where did this come from? He was being too cocky on the stand. Like, OK, you know, I, I am an expert in musicology and all. Yeah, but stuff. let me just let me finish. OK, sorry. The, the difference is when you guys testify, this is y'all's first time. Y'all don't know about courts. Uh, what Doug was saying is that this guy, he's testified before in other cases. In fact, this guy's testified numerous times in this case. So he knows not to nut up. He knows what to say. 
he shouldn't be going crazy, saying crazy shit like you guys do when we get you on the stand. And so that's that's the issue. He should know not to say this stuff. And the judge is saying, if you know not to say this stuff and you said it, you could derail this whole case. In fact, the judge said, if it wasn't for the fact that the prosecutors had indicted that dude as a as a convicted felon, she would have granted a mistrial. What does that mean? It means millions of millions of my dollars, millions of my dollars and other uh, Fulton County residents dollars go down the drain. Imagine all of that money gone, all of those man hours from the state, from the defense counsel gone, all of the jury's time. That one black man could have sunk the whole case. That's why the judge is like, you mean you ain't you ain't never coming back up here. Look what you almost did. Look at what you almost did. I will never allow you to come back up. Hilton is like, let him come back up. And and I'm no, I won't say anything. Start the cross. The judge is like, you ain't never coming back. All right. So that's 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 the issue there. But I do like what Hilton did to try to save it, to be like, bring him back up. But Whitaker was like, F that. What were you saying, A.V.? No, I mean, I think I was probably going to add on to what you had already said in that part. So Mm -hmm. very good. Excellent. All right. Let's uh, let's bring it back up and let's see Hilton try to scramble and scrape and try to save it. She's going to try to save it right here. Them. And, and um, um, if they, they can't follow, follow that instruction, please alert right. right. yeah. yeah. You're right. Can, can we, we just, just ask that, that we can just stop, just stop our testimony, testimony and give them an opportunity, opportunity to cross-examine him? him. No, no. no. I no, guess you can ask, ask and the answer, answer is no. no. Judge is like, hell no. But I don't know. The answer is no. You can the answer is no. You're right. I don't believe that he and my my question was broad. It's, it's not, not your fault. fault. I, and I understand that, but Your Honor, the testimony that was given today, this was a one-time infra- one infraction, Your Honor. And we would just ask, we can understand that if his testimony, if the state no longer can question him, we would ask that all of his testimony from today is not stricken because of one mistake. Like, this was one mistake that he made, Your Honor. We would ask, we would stop our questioning of him allow the defense to cross him on what has come out now, but all of the information that he's provided this far, he has been careful. He has not said anything today that was even remotely close to what happened here right now. It, I believe it was a mistake on his part. Maybe as a state, I should have instructed clearer and I will take that responsibility, Your Honor. But given that this was one moment in time the state is going to ask that we will stop question if that's the sanction that the state has to stop questioning him your honor we will take that sanction and ask that the defense be allowed to cross him and that we be not allowed to direct him and that's fine but not that his entire testimony from today be struck your honor given that that was one mistake that he made very short in time your honor. all right we understood. Just, do i need to respond stands. to that your honor you don't okay. need to thank you yes i did not mention it but also all the exhibits admitted through this gentleman need to be uh, taken back under seal yeah. as well and disregarded by the jury please wow this is a this is a really big sanction sanction guys thug is like pumped <laughs> <laughs> shout out to thug in the black do you have another Zip witness up? available Yes, Your Honor. We're, okay. we're trying to figure that out. All right. Go ahead and oh, get them lined poor, up. Excuse me. Poor, what's her I, name? Hilton. Uh, is retired investigator Dennis going to return to the stand at some point? I'm not sure if the state had planned on that or not, or if your sanction would bar that as well. Oh, no, no. He won't be returning. Thank you. Wow. I just wanted that clarified. So he's not coming back anytime into the future. That's huge. That's such Unless a huge like win. For me to have him come back and admonish him, but I'm not going to do it in front of the jury because I don't think we need to highlight it further. Okay. I kind of would like to tell him he should have known better, though. Y'all can just relay that. Um, this okay. judge so damn snarky. Wow, man! Shout out to Whitaker. 
Yeah, that was a big deal yesterday. We were all surprised. I cannot believe that. That's a huge win. Somebody write W-Y-S-L in the damn chat. That's a huge <laughs> win for him.